Hello everyone. Welcome to Suzakon Digital 2023. Topic for this session is Rapid Application Environment Provisioning on Modern HCR using Rancher and Harvester. Before we start, I would like to introduce the team. I am Shantanu Padare, Technical Manager at OS3 Infotech. My role involves designing and deploying complex infrastructure solution. With 14 plus years of experience, I specialize in implementing open source technologies and integrating Rancher with other open source tools. Also joining us will be Mihir Patil, Senior Systems Engineer at OS3 Infotech. Mihir brings extensive expertise in implementing and managing advanced open source solutions. We will start this with brief introduction of the solution and current business challenges. Then we will discuss the solution overview and architecture flow. We will also discuss the technology stack that we have used for the demo. Later, we will conclude this session with some use case scenarios. We will discuss some common challenges faced during build and deployment stages of application. Then we will see what solutions can be used to overcome the challenges using GitOps for provisioning the infrastructure and DevOps for application deployments. Combining the best of both worlds to achieve application environment provisioning. I have listed some of the common challenges that business encounters. One of the major challenges faced in manual process of building and deployment of application infrastructure environment is that it is time consuming, error prone in nature. This process requires individual steps for provisioning infrastructure, configuring networks, and then deploying the application on top of it. Each application setup involves repetitive manual tasks, making it prone to human error and consuming their valuable time. Additionally, manual managing dependency across multiple environments such as libraries, framework, and services can be a daunting task, leading to inconsistencies and compatibility issues. It is also observed that manual setup and maintenance of separate environment for each stage of software development life cycle are not only time consuming but also prone to inconsistencies. These inconsistencies can lead to inefficient testing and debugging, ultimately affecting the software's overall quality and reliability. These challenges face a significant role in affecting the business by slowing down the time to market for new applications or updating the existing ones. The time and effort required for manual configuration and deployment of each environment can lead the delayed releases, missed opportunities, and ultimately loss of competitive advantage. It becomes essential to find the ways to accelerate the development process without compromising quality or reliability. Moreover, as business aims to scale their operations or introduce new application, the manual deployment process becomes a bottleneck. Manual setups and configuration becomes impractical for frequent iterations or rapidly responding to market demands. Scaling up infrastructure, provisioning resources, and deploying applications manually can be time consuming and challenging. Manual deployments also pose security and compliance risk for organizations. Inconsistencies or incorrect configuration during manual setup can lead to security vulnerabilities or non-compliance of industry regulations. This lack of standardization deployment process and versioning controls increase the risk of unauthorized changes, making it challenging to maintain a secure and compliant application environment. GitOps simplifies infrastructure and application configuration management by using Git as a single central repository. Teams can store, track, manage configuration changes effectively with Git's version control capabilities. Configurations defined in desired state of the application and infrastructure. Teams collaborate 
through git commit to ensure the developed environment matches the desired state. Git implies a continuous deployment pipeline for automated deployment. This pipeline automates build, test and deployment process reflecting changes from Git to the deployed environment. Continuous integration and delivery tools orchestrates this workflow for seamless deployments. Changes in Git repository triggered the CI-CD pipeline, eliminating manual intervention, reducing error and saving time. Automation enables faster and more reliable deployment, improving time to market and operational efficiency. The combination of Git as a single source of truth and the continuous deployment pipeline ensures consistency, version control and reproductibility across multiple environment. Changes in Git synchronize application environment with defined state. By adopting to GitOps, organizations can achieve standardized and automated infrastructure and application configuration management leading to faster deployments, reduced errors, and improved collaboration between team. In the next sections, we will explore the technology stack and the importance of speed to market in GitOps. To build this solution, we have used various tools in our technology stack to simplify container management infrastructure provisioning, version control, collaboration, and automated software delivery. For container management, we rely on Rancher and RK. Rancher simplifies the deployment and management of container across clusters, while RK offers scalability and resilience for containerized application. Harvester serves as our infrastructure management solution. It is open source, hyperconverged infrastructure that simplifies resource management in Kubernetes based environment. It provides capabilities for virtual machine management, storage management and networking. Terraform is used for infrastructure provisioning. It allows us to define and manage infrastructure resource and ensures version control and consistency across different environment. Git repositories such as GitLab are at the core of our version control and collaboration. They track changes, maintain a history of modification and facilitate collaboration among team members. GitLab provides additional features for code review, issue tracking, CI CD pipelines for, automate, for automated builds and developments. We use GitLab CI CD. It allows us to define pipelines that build automatically, test and deploy applications based on triggers from Git or Git repository. This automation reduces manual efforts, improves efficiency and accelerates time to market. By leveraging this technology, we enable organizations to effectively manage container workloads provision infrastructure resources, maintain version control, and automate software delivery. These tools work together seamlessly, supporting the principles of GitOps and expediting the development of application environment. Next, Mihir will explain the stack in more detail and demonstrate its capabilities. Thank you, Shantanu, for sharing the valuable insights. Now, we will walk you all through the architecture and the animated flow before we start the demo. As Shantanu mentioned in the tech stack, we are using the GitLab for our central code repository and the version control tool. We are also leveraging the GitLab CI CD feature for triggering the automated pipelines. Next, we have the Rancher management server as a bridge between the Harvester HCI and GitLab. Using Rancher dashboard, we have a granular control and visibility over the processes occurring in our environment after the pipeline has been triggered. We also have the Harvester HCI as our infrastructure management solution. It is a platform that hosts the guest VMs on which the Kubernetes cluster will be running. 
at the very right we have the web browser that will be used to access the GitLab console for triggering the pipelines, access the Rancher GUI and browse the application after it is deployed. As you can see, our GitLab has two repositories, one for the infrastructure and the other for the application code. To start with the infrastructure repository, first we will trigger the pipeline for the infrastructure branch. After the successful execution of the pipeline, we will see that the VMs are getting created on the Harvester HCI. We will also see that a RKE cluster is also created in Rancher and is waiting for the master and the worker nodes to get registered. Now, once the VM are up and running, they will start registering as a node with the RKE cluster with their respective roles. And then the HARK cluster build process will be kicked off. We will wait for the cluster to be ready. Once the cluster is ready, it will output the cube config details of the cluster that will be stored secure in the, in the GitLab application repository. Next, we will trigger the multi-project pipeline for the application repository. After the successful execution of the pipeline, we can see all the application resources getting deployed on the newly created downstream RKE cluster. Once all the resources are active, we will access the e-commerce application front-end service via the web browser and browse through the application. With that said, let's get started with the demo. Okay, let us start with the demo. But before that, let me log into my lab environment. As you can see, I have already logged into my GitLab account and open the path for the code repositories. This is the repository where I have stored the infrastructure code and I will be using the infra branch for building the infrastructure through the pipeline. This is the repository of my application code and the branch which I will be using is app for the deployment of the application. In the next tab, I have also logged into my Rancher management server which is the control plane for managing the downstream cluster and its resources. Through this dashboard, we will get a glimpse of the activities happening in the cluster. I've also opened the Rancher dashboard where I will get the deployments uh, and see the VMs live while they are deploying. The namespace in which the VMs will be spun up is e-commerce app. Now let us go to the GitLab and trigger the pipeline for the infra branch. I will go to the CICD pipelines and select the infra branch for triggering the pipeline. This pipeline has multiple stages. The first stage is validate where we are using Terraform as infrastructure as a code. The validate stage will check the Terraform code for any errors and misconfigurations. Once the job is succeeded, we will move to the next stage, which is the build stage. In this stage, the Terraform plan job will be executed and it will install the Terraform providers and build our infrastructure and preview it. Let us wait for the validate uh, stage to be executed successfully. Let us check the job status. As you can see, the job is successful. Let us move a uh, to the GitLab pipelines and check the next stage and the status of the execution. Okay, so the pipeline is, is in progress. Now, as you can see, uh, it has out, uh, rendered and outlined the plan. So there are total eight resources that will be added into our environment 
and it also shows the definitions of the resources that are added the job is successful now the uh, now the as the uh, job is successful after the successful execution of this stage we are ready to deploy the infrastructure and the deploy stage is triggered and we can see the vms getting deployed uh, in the harvester environment and here is our downstream cluster that is already created now let us wait for the vms to uh, be up and running this will take some time in the meantime let's check the uh, cluster management console and see the activities that are happening inside the rancher dashboard so the machines are uh, waiting to get registered now the vms are spun up and it is waiting for the uh, network to get attached and assign these ip addresses for each node so you can start communicating with the rancher okay so now as you can see the ip addresses are also getting assigned now the vms are ready and have started to register themselves with the cluster so now let us check the status of the cluster now in a few minutes uh, we will see under this machine column the machine count uh, will be populated and we can see the machines uh, in the machine tab inside the cluster itself let us wait for a few minutes as you can see the machine count is getting populated and the machine staff is also active now let's check the status of the machines that are going to register with this cluster so we are we can see that the machines are populated and the sanity check and the connectivity between the nodes uh, is also started so as we can see in the provision logs the cluster build activity is started once this cluster build activity is completed the machines will become in the active state now this uh, activity will also take a few minutes to get completed we will also check uh, the related resources conditions before while the machines are getting registered let us check the provisioning logs uh, the cluster provisioning will take approximately 7 to 8 minutes 
uh, for the activity to be completed. Okay, so the control plane is already built and now it is building the worker, worker plane. Now it is deploying the network plugin. Okay, now the add ons are getting deployed onto the cluster. Okay, so now as you can see the message, the cluster has finished building successfully. Now let us check the node status. As you can see, the first node has already bootstrapped and the second master node uh, is also joined the cluster. We will wait for uh, all the nodes to join the cluster and then uh, we will trigger the uh, application pipeline so six out of six nodes the two node two master nodes are active okay so five out of the six node are active now we are just waiting for the last master node to join the cluster and the cluster is in waiting state and for the api to become ready once the api becomes ready we can explore this cluster
the network plugin is yet to install on this particular node due to which it is uh, in the registration stage. Sometimes it takes a few minutes uh, for the network plugin to get active. Okay, as you can see, the cluster uh, is in active state. Let us check the status of the node. It is updating now. And now the network plugin is getting installed. Now that our cluster is partially uh, active, we can go ahead and explore it. As we can see, uh, all the six nodes are active. Let us check the cluster node status in the cluster management tab as well. It is just doing the sanity check. Okay, so the master nodes, all the master nodes are active and the worker nodes are just updating uh, with the new registration. And we can see the cluster is also getting updated. Okay, we have the last node is also getting updated. Okay. Now, uh, the key point that we can see here uh, that I would like to highlight is that we can see that uh, the cluster environment provisioning that is spinning up of the VMs with the uh, all the prerequisites and the all the desired configuration as well as building the cluster took only 12 minutes. So this is a drastic improvement over the manual process. And now on top of that, it will take we will uh, deploy our uh, application pipeline. So I will go to the uh, cluster and see the cluster health. Okay, so the resources are looking pretty good at this point. Now, at this point, uh, one more thing is the cube config details are also been uh, populated in the application repository and it is stored securely. Now, let us go to the uh, application repo and trigger the pipeline for the deployment of the application on this particular cluster. I'll go to the pipelines and trigger the next stage. The next stage is uh, adding the certificates for the application deployment. So it will take a few seconds for the certificates to be inserted onto the nodes. Since I'm in this lab environment, we are using our own private CA. Okay, so the job is completed successfully. Now we will trigger the multi-project pipeline 
for the application deployment. I'll trigger it from here itself. Let us go to the Rancher dashboard and see the resources. Okay, so the pipeline is executed successfully. Now we will uh, deploy uh, the application onto the cluster. Now, in no time, you will see the deployments getting populated one by one and the pods will spin up and the services for uh, each application will is also deployed onto the cluster. Okay. So as you can see, uh, the pods are in the running state. So this is a complex application with uh, around 11 microservices interacting with each other. So most of the uh, microservices, rather all the pods are in a perfect condition. So the application deployment took nearly a minute or so uh, to get deployed. So this is a drastic uh, jump from the traditional deployment process. Now uh, we will access the front end of the application, which is the front end service. Uh, currently we are using uh, the, the node port service, but this can be also be uh, converted to the egress. But for the demonstration purpose, we are using the node port service uh, using the access uh, accessing the service with the IP addresses since so it's a closed demo environment. Now the application is deployed and you can see the application up and running within no time. So now this was the demo all about the rapid application environment provisioning and the application deployment using Rancher and Harvester. Now uh, before concluding this session, we will uh, have a touch base on the use cases for this particular uh, solution. I will go back to my uh, presentation screen. So the use cases and further possibilities consist of the uh, this solution can also be extended to the hybrid infrastructure wherein a set of secured services can be on-prem and the, uh, the and some of the services can also be in the cloud. And you can provision the on-demand uh, infrastructure depending upon the load on the of the application. Now, uh, in the harvester environment, we can have the legacy uh, application uh, in the VMs as well as the modern applications on the containers in the same environment itself. And as I said earlier, on-demand on environment uh, provisioning is also a crucial part in meeting the uh, time to market. So. Provisioning on-demand infrastructure with zero touch and uh, with zero touch and consistently is uh, is also a key factor in uh, achieving the growing business needs for the organization. So this was about it for this particular session. Uh, we will conclude this session. Thank you for joining.